So the Falkirk Center was put together for faith and freedom. And uh, it, essentially our country uh, is a product of the Judeo-Christian Religious Foundation, first and foremost. Out of that comes James Madison from Princeton, writes us a constitution, gives us rule of law. And then you're really lucky and you get Adam Smith, uh, rough, rough uh, Calvinist Protestant from Scotland and uh, give it the free market system, we all got rich together. And so that is the set of ideas and institutions which made this nation exceptional. Uh, and that is under attack right now. And China has been uh, running an information war against us since 1999, I mean, prior to that, Mao, Mao and the Cultural Revolution. But 1999, a couple of colonels wrote a book called Unrestricted Warfare and outlined the information war, the technology war, and the economic war they're running against. They saw the results of the Gulf War and the kinetic war. They knew they couldn't match us. And so they've been fighting a war against us. The question is, are, are we at war? And the American people are just finally waking up to this. President Trump is the first president we had in, in 40 years that's done anything to take uh, China head on. And so the biblical principles are just the, the Judeo-Christian principles in which we recognize that every uh, person on this planet, including 1.4 billion Chinese, are created in the image of God. Uh, and they're being repressed and run by a totalitarian regime under Marxist principles. And so the religious war at the highest level is just a simple one. It's God versus no God, God versus atheism. And the biblical principles we can get into, but I mean, there's not much debate there on the ethical principles that most all cultures follow, but the Ten Commandments, love your neighbor uh, as yourself, love God above all, etc. cetera. So, so Kevin, if you could expand on that, I think this is an, another area of your expertise. So you take, take David's very eloquent introduction to the biblical principles aspect of investing, weaponized investing, aggressive investing, pointing a finger at countries or groups that may be cheating, may be lying, i.e. China in this case. How do you work around a China, and I'm gonna to get to Rod in a second, because here's a man who knows money has no color and has no creed and has no gender, but so how do you work around it, China being such an important aspect of investing? What do we do with China? Well, first let me address the biblical principle, which is, uh, Jesus said in Luke 16, 11, he said, if you're not faithful with your unrighteous mammon, who will ever trust you with the true riches? So as a practicing Christian, to me, biblical principle means I just need to be faithful with my money. I need to, where I spend it, how I invest it, how I give it, all matter. And what we try and teach people, because we have the TV show Economic War Room uh, on Blaze TV, we try and tell people, your money is as much a weapon as anything that you do. And if we are in an economic war, and we are in an economic war, I and mean, we've had multiple panels here that have discussed it, the Chinese talked about it in unrestricted warfare. This is not a traditional war where you're gonna kiss your spouse goodbye as they're gonna go get on a boat and go fight a war somewhere. It's an economic war. It's a war intended and targeting average Americans and individuals. And if you're gonna fight that economic war, you gotta get your weapons. And if it's an economic war, your weapon is your money. So China has been for more than two decades infiltrating our financial markets to try and convince us the only way you're gonna make money is if you invest in the future growth of China because the Chinese economy is inevitable. Uh, so we're gonna take your industries and they've literally stolen through intellectual property theft or they've convinced us to uh, go with cheaper labor options in China where it's not, it's a technology transfer because you're gonna enter there. And we wanna help Americans say no, no more. Our money is going to be invested so that we can do what President Reagan told us to do, we have to fight for freedom to pass it on to the next generation. And the way that we do this is we weaponize our money. So we invest in American industries, American businesses, or allies of the United States, but certainly not in Chinese companies that don't conform to our accounting standards and so forth. Very good. Kevin, wouldn't but you say this is the embodiment of President Reagan's, and I'm sorry to Eric, but just uh, apropos of President Reagan, through, of the embodiment of his peace through strength, this is just what we're talking about so that we don't go to a kinetic war? Right, absolutely. If, if we do not, if we continue to transfer our technology to China and we continue to invest in Chinese companies through like the thrift savings plan, we stop that, praise God for that, but thrift savings plan was about to take veterans, money from veterans and active duty servicemen and women and, and government officials and you well, know, your retirement Congress, plans. Yeah. It's gonna take that money and it's gonna invest in a number of Chinese companies that are under sanction 
by the U.S. government. So we're not supposed to do business with them, but they, we, you can invest in them. It's ridiculous, it's ludicrous, but they've so co-opted Wall Street. So we're training investors to weaponize their money so that we can save America and pass it to the next generation. David.